Hi there. Time now for us to take a look at everything you might want to know about vectors before you hit those last couple of years of high school. Things you might want to know about vectors. This is a very basic introduction to vectors. We're not going to do all of the things you can do with vectors, and that's fine. But this will give you a nice background into what vectors are and some basic vector arithmetic uh, in this screencast. So, I mean, you, you know that if you have the point negative 1, 1, and you have the point 1, 4, like so, you know that you can draw a line segment between those points, between A and B. And you know that we call that segment AB. But here's the kicker. If you decide that that's not just a line segment, but that is a directed line segment, that that line segment starts at A and goes to B, then AB is not a line segment. AB is a vector. A vector is a quantity that is marked by both magnitude and direction. There's a length to this segment, that's the magnitude, but it points in a particular direction. The vector starts at A and ends at B. Uh, A is called the initial point. B is called the terminal point. A is called the initial point. B is called the terminal point. Now, we can write vector AB in what's called component form. And to do that, we count how far we go over and then how far we go up going from A to B. Uh, so we go two over and three up. We say that vector AB is the vector two, three. Uh, you might notice that in component form, you've got delta X and delta Y. Uh, sometimes this 2, 3 is written as 2i plus 3j. Uh, I and j, i is a vector that points in the direction of the positive x-axis and has length 1. That's i. Uh, j is a vector that points in the direction of the positive y-axis and has length 1. So if I were to take two of these guys and then three of these guys and lay them tail to head, tail to head, tail to head, tail to head, I would do the same thing as if I started at A and as the crow flies went to B. Now, here's the curious thing about vectors. Curious thing about vectors is if I start here at C, this is 1, negative 1, and end over here at D, uh, D is the point, oh, what is it, 3, 2, then this vector, vector CD, is also the vector 2, 3. And what we say is the vector AB is equal to the vector CD. We don't say the vectors are congruent. The vectors are, in fact, equal, because the only two things that characterize a vector are magnitude and direction. Now, clearly, both of these vectors have the same magnitude. The line segments are the same length and those vectors point in the same direction. So since those two vectors have the same magnitude and point in the same direction, those vectors are equal. Okay, so, oh, one more thing before I hit next page. One more thing. 
how could we know what this vector is in component form? Well, where did this 2 come from? This 2 came from subtracting that 1 and that negative 1. 1 minus negative 1. That's your change in x. Similarly, we could have subtracted 3 minus 1 and gotten 2. Where did this 3 come from? Well, 4 minus 1. That's your delta y. Or, if you like, 2 minus negative 1. That's your delta y. So if I were to give you three points, if I were to give you a uh, negative 2, 2, and b negative 1, 4, and c 3, 2, I think at this point, you could figure out what vector AB is in component form and what vector BC is in component form and what vector AC is in component form. Now, you can do that either by subtracting coordinates. And remember, we do terminal minus initial. We do the C's minus the A's, the C's minus the B's, the B's minus the A's. We do terminals minus initials. So you could do it that way, or you could graph the points, draw the segments, and count boxes for yourself. You don't get style points for doing it in a particular way. Now, consider the following. Bill Nye, the science guy. Let's pretend that I have this vector. This is the vector 2, 1. And let's pretend that I took that vector and copied it three times. Put them tail to head, tail to head, tail to head. Well, that makes one mega vector. And that mega vector goes six over and three up. And so it appears to be realistic that if you were to take the vector 2, 1 and multiply it by 3, you would get the vector 6, 3. This is not a surprising result. This is not a surprising result at all. You would expect that if I took the vector 2, 1 and tripled it, I would get the vector 6, 3. I'm going to move this over for the... Oh, really? There we go. Oh, that one's on infinite cloners, so I can't... But I will anyway. Here's how I'll do it. That's right. I have to take it off infinite cloner and then I can move it. Okay. So what now? Consider the following. This is the vector 2, 1. This is the vector 1, negative 3. How do I add two vectors? Well, to add two vectors, I have to put the, the arrow part of the one of them up against the pointy part of the other one, like so. And then I connect the dots, and I see what I've got. And it appears that from here to there, I go over 3 and down 2 over 3, and down 2. Therefore, it appears that the vector 2, 1 plus the vector 1, negative 3 is the vector 3, negative 2. It appears that that is the case. And in fact, it is. This is not surprising. Well, what about subtraction? Again, the vector 2, 1. Very popular vector, apparently. Uh, and the vector here, let's call this vector 1, negative 1. What if I want to subtract those vectors? What if I want 2, 1, minus 1, negative 1? Well, you imagine what that's probably going to be. You're hoping that that's 2 minus 1 and 1 minus negative 1. You're hoping that it's that. You're saying, oh, please, George, let this be intuitive. And it actually is. See, the vector 
negative, see, here's the thing right here, right there. I've got to subtract a vector. Well, when we subtract, we add the opposite. What does the opposite of one negative one look like? Well, I imagine it looks like that. That is what I imagine is the opposite of one negative one. And so if I bring that over here and connect the dots, I get right one and up two, exactly as I expect. So vector addition and vector subtraction are exactly the way you anticipate them being. So time for you to practice just a little bit. Let's pretend that I have the vector A and that vector is 3, 1. And I have the vector B and that vector is negative 3, 4. And I have the vector C and that vector is 5, 2. I want you to be able to find some things for me. I want you to be able to find 2a plus b plus 4c in component form. And I want you to be able to find 5a minus 3b plus 2c in component form. So you have to figure out what two of these is and add it to that, and add it to four of those, and it runs exactly the way that you think it does. Now, I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. I'm going to ask you to find the magnitude of each of those vectors. Now, how do we find a magnitude? I'll go back one page. How do I find the magnitude of this vector? Well, I have to know how long that vector is. How long is that vector? Well, this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Where's the right triangle? Here's the right triangle. And the length of this leg is 6. Hmm. And the length of this leg is 3. Hmm. And so what we say is that the magnitude of the vector 6, 3, those are absolute value bars. Absolute value bars talk about distance. It is reasonable to use absolute value bars to talk about distances. Distances are magnitudes in vector discussions. So how do I do that? Well, I take the square root of 6 squared plus 3 squared. Hmm, I wonder if that was just true in that one example or if it's going to be true over here also. How do I find the magnitude of this vector? Well, I've got to know how long this leg is and how long that leg is. And it appears that the magnitude of 3, negative 2 is the square root of this squared plus this squared. Huh. OK. So if I have the thing graphed, it's easy to find the the distance between two points. And even if I don't have it graphed, I can work right off of this form right here. Once I know this form right here, magnitude falls right out. OK, one more thing that we should talk about. Let's pretend, shall we? We started at negative 1, 1 way long time ago, what seems like forever ago. And 1, 4. And let's pretend that instead of just connecting the line segment there, let's pretend we came up with the line. All of the points on the line that contains the vector AB. Let's pretend that I want the vector equation of this line. Well, the vector equation of this line is usually something of the form where vector r equals some vector plus a parameter times some other vector. And I'll break it down and we'll talk about what each of those parts are. Uh, this vector generally represents some point on the line. It's a vector form of some point on the line. This vector is a vector in the direction of the line. And t is a scalar parameter. 
So if I want a vector form for the equation of this line, if I want a vector equation of this line, and I say a vector equation because there are many, many possible correct answers, I'm going to say that this line has the form r equals, now I need a point on the line, and either of those points will do, or any point on this line will do, I'm going to choose negative 1, 1. Could have chosen 1, 4, could have chosen any of a, of a whole bunch of others, could have chosen 0, 2 and a half. I chose negative 1, 1, plus t times some vector in the direction of the line. Well, usually the fastest way to get a vector in the direction of the line is just to connect those two, and we've already established 37 times that this is the vector 2, 3. And so we would say that this is the vector, well, this is the vector form of an equation for that line. It is a vector form for the equation of the line. There are many, many possible correct answers. We could have decided that this is 1, 4 plus t times 2, 3. If we do, whatever t is in this scenario, t is 1 less in this scenario. And I'll let you think about that, why that, why that is true. Um, any vector in the direction of the line will work. I could use negative 2, negative 3. Or I could use negative 20, negative 30. I can use any vector in the direction of that line. Any one at all. Uh, I can use any point on the line. I can use any vector in the direction of the line. So, for you... If the point A is 2, 5, and the point B is negative 1, 4, I would like a vector. Now, that, that's just, I'm so sorry. I'm a spelling bee champion. Uh, vector form of the equation of the line between A and B. Oh, let's, vector form of the equation of line AB. And if C is the point negative 2, 3, and D is the point 3, negative 1, looking for the vector form of the equation of line CD. So in each case, you're going to have R equals a vector plus T times another vector. You're going to have vector R equals vector plus t times another vector. You get to pick a point on the line here. So either of these can go here, either of these can go here, or, and, sorry, and you need a direction vector, which means you need to know a vector from A to B or the vector from C to D, and it goes right in that spot. Okay, we went a little long tonight, but that's a lot of things to study. It's, it might be new to you, and if it is, I hope this gives you a decent grounding. Okay, fantastic. Go get them. Talk to you soon.